In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a PCB designed within EagleCAD version 9.3, generate the output files required for a professional PCB manufacturer, and how to upload those files to a, a typical uh, PCB manufacturer online. So this board has already been routed and it's passed its electrical rules check and design rules check. It's a double sided uh, design. So the next step is to generate the uh, CAM output. So that's a little button here if I press that. So what this does is it takes the Eagle CAD proprietary design information and translates it into a set of files in an industry standard format called Gerber uh, that can be read by any uh, PCB manufacturer. There are two types of uh, output files that uh, get created. One is uh, it's called an excellent drill file, which specifies the coordinates and the sizes of the various holes that need to be drilled into your uh, printed circuit board. And then there are the Gerber files, which specify the patterns on each of the layers on your printed circuit board. The printed circuit board, double sided printed circuit board, will have copper layers on the top and bottom. And there's a preview uh, picture here which shows, uh, shows them. Then you have uh, on top of, uh, of the copper, you'll have a solder mask, which is a uh, print region uh, that layers down a resist layer. It's like um, a coating uh, that provides a protective coating to the copper, but also uh, resists solder sticking to it, which is um, very useful during the soldering process when you're assembling these things automatically, as it stops the solder running off a pad uh, and potentially onto uh, a pad that's adjacent to it. There's, um, there's also the solder paste mask layer, uh, which um, provides a manufacturer with the instruction as to where to place solder paste for surface mount components. Um, we're going to uh, ignore that layer or our manufacturer is going to ignore that layer because we're only asking them to make printed circuit boards. We're not actually asking them to assemble any of the surface mount components on this board. And then we have the silk screen layers, the top and bottom silk screen layers, which are uh, almost like um, a user defined print layer. You can specify anything uh, to go on this layer. You can draw lines, you can draw circles, you can place bitmap images, you can place text. And also any component that you lay down will automatically have an outline and a component designator placed on this layer for you. Before I go ahead and uh, generate uh, these uh, files, I'm actually going to add some more detail to each of these layers. So at the moment, each one of these uh, layers specified here uh, will result in, in a file being generated. And this box here shows the list of the layers from EagleCAD that would actually get copied in. I'm going to add to each of these layers a dimension layer. The dimension layer is the outline of the board. If we zoom in here, you'll actually see it see it appear. And that outline is required by some PCB manufacturers who need to know the so the profile already uh, already has it itself. That is the uh, the outline. But each layer, they like to have each layer individually uh, contain the uh, the dimension layer so that they can uh, be certain of the relative position uh, of each file that you've uh, you've sent them. So let's just finish off going through these dimension screen top dimension screen bottom dimension. Final uh, task is to make sure that you have selected Gerber RS274X as the output type. There are a few options. Not all um, manufacturing companies 
uh, accept the other options. And having done that, we can now run that job. And it's asking us where do I want to, uh, where do we want me to uh, place those uh, design files? So I'll select that folder. And those files have now been created. And what it's created is a directory with two subdirectories. One directory con containing the list of drill sizes and XY coordinates, and the other directory containing a list of the different Gerber files, one for each layer. And all we're going to do here is zip these up into one uh, zip file, send to compressed folder, and we're going to call that order.zip. So that's it. That's all I have to do to create uh, the uh, Gerber files for the manufacturer. One final task in uh, Eagle CAD is to make a, make a note of the of the extent of the PCB. So that's its maximum uh, width and its maximum height, for its maximum length and its maximum width. So to do that, I'm going to position the relative marker at the top corner, and then I'm going to come down to here which is the maximum extent. And if I look up in the relative measurements, I see that this board is 41 by 28 millimeters, 41 by 28. So now let's go to not Google, but PCB way. Uh, which is my favorite uh, uh, manufacturer. And um, let's see if we can get a quote for that board. PCB Way, a Chinese uh, PCB manufacturer, they operate a 24 hour, uh, 365 day of the year service. So, no matter what time uh, you choose to um, submit an order, somebody will, in a fairly short amount of time, pick this up review it and uh, process the order for you. So I'm going to select PCB instant quote, make sure that it's selected the printed circuit board, which is all we want. And now we can go down through these list of questions and get a quote for our printed circuit board. There aren't many of these options that you actually need to deal with. So board type, single pieces, that means when they come to me in the post, I want a stack of however many boards that I've purchased, not a panel containing uh, many boards uh, with, uh, with them within them, as shown in uh, in this this picture here. So I'm going to stay clicked on the default of the single uh, uh, single pieces. Um, it's now asking me how many different designs are there. Uh, in the panel. Well, there's only one design because I'm not having this panelized. So now I can come down and enter the dimensions. So that's 41 millimeters by 28 wide. Next, it wants us to uh, say how many uh, boards that do we want. Um, typically with PCB way, they will supply up to 10 boards for um, the lowest cost possible. So it's really not in your interest to uh, select five boards. So we'll go ahead here and select 10 boards. Now, the remaining questions, the green uh, rectangles indicate the default. Any change from a default will result typically in an increase in cost. So you can see that a two layer design is the default. Our board is a two layer, so we'll leave that. And then what material do you want it on? Well, we're making a FR4 printed circuit board, not some exotic aluminium or flexi foil uh, board. So we'll leave it on FR4. Now there's the specific type of FR4. We don't really care to that. And the thickness, as I mentioned in uh, magazine articles in the past, 1.6 millimeters, the default is, um, is a very good uh, dimension to use. Um, it's relatively thin, but it's still mechanically stable and quite rigid, even in reasonably large boards. So that's uh, that's a good option. 
The minimum track spacing and minimum hole sizes, um, it's very unlikely that you've tried to um, or, or needed to use a through hole smaller than 0.3 millimeters or tracks smaller than six mil. Um, you really should be avoiding that anyway. Um, if you have used tracks smaller than that, you can select this, but that will automatically increase the price as it's a more uh, difficult process uh, to achieve and may result in either um, failures that uh, the manufacturer has to discard or simply that they're using more expensive machines to process your job. Solder mask colour, you've got a choice of what uh, what colours they are and the same with silk screen. Um, for some of these options, changing the colour won't actually um, result in a cost increase, but we can come back and experiment to find out with that in a second. Gold fingers, so that means do you have any contacts like an uh, edge connectors as part of your design that require that to those to be uh, to be plated in gold? Um, typically, no. Um, if you do, that will have quite an impact on the price, but it's not as expensive as uh, as you might imagine. Um, now the surface finish, so exposed copper such as for component pads, um, um, through hole connector soldering pads, um, anything where you're expected to be able to solder needs to be co coated with something and your choices are um, hot air surface levelling with a lead based solder, hot air surface levelling with a lead 3 based solder, immersion gold which gives you unsurprisingly a gold finish. Uh, OSP, which is a process which um, I'm not terribly familiar with. Um, hard gold is um, just a variation on uh, immersion gold. And immersion silver, which again is a process I'm not terribly uh, familiar with. The gold plating processes are often required when your printed circuit board is going to go through a, um, uh, a surface mount assembly process. Hot air surface levelling doesn't really lend itself for high volume uh, surface mount uh, manufacturing because the uh, end result is not very level, it's fairly level. Um, but for us, for hobbyists, this is by far the cheapest option, so we'll uh, stick with that. Via process tenting, again, these are fairly uh, exotic finishes which have um, uh, no um, uh, impact for us. And then finally, the finished copper. So that's what's what is the the weight of the copper uh, that's being deposited? How thick uh, are the copper uh, traces on your board? And again, one ounce is um, is typically good enough, unless you're designing something which has high current uh, drawing, thin traces. Um, you won't need to go to a thicker um, uh, conductor uh, material to cope. Uh, uh, with um, uh, those currents, i.e. to deal with resistive uh, losses or, um, or heat. So we've modified very few of these, uh, these options. So now we can go to calculate and that would give us a price. And unsurprisingly, because we selected basically all of the defaults, the cost for 10 printed circuit boards being created in under 48 hours uh, is just five uh, US dollars. You then get the opportunity to choose your uh, shipping uh, requirements. DHL Express is 21 US dollars, so the total bill here is going to come out at about uh, 20, uh, 26 US dollars. I think I got a 1% discount. Um, when, you, uh, when you pay for this, uh, you, will, um, uh, you will be charged. Just put some nonsense in there. So we come through. Okay, well, it's going to ask us to register, and I'm not going to register into my account. But um, at that point of um, uh, clicking Add to Cart, you will then have the opportunity to drag and drop your zip file and it is nothing more complicated than dragging a zip file over uh, to a um, uh, to a uh, Dropbox and at that point you will be informed that your design is under review 
and you will receive that notification uh, within a few hours maximum uh, as to whether any issues were found with the design or whether uh, your um, design has been accepted and is ready waiting for payment. At that point, a simple um, uh, uh, website uh, page click brings you to the ability to pay by PayPal or bank transfer or uh, other means. And PayPal is the cheapest and easiest mechanism for, uh, for transferring funds. So um, if you don't have a PayPal account, I recommend that you set one up. Um, it's by far the cheapest and quickest means of getting funds to uh, PCB way. At that point of paying, your order has been accepted and is being processed, and you will have uh, boards completed at the factory within four, 48 hours of that. And then um, if you've ordered by DHL Express three days later, they'll either turn up um, uh, on your doorstep or in the morning of delivery, you'll get a telephone call or email to say that uh, you need to pay customs uh, taxes. Whether you get charged customs taxes or not very much depends upon uh, what country you're living in. Um, here in Ireland, uh, I find that uh, about one in three orders that uh, come to me um, receive uh, a customs uh, duty payment. And unfortunately, because it's coming through a courier, you not only get a customs fee, you also get a courier processing fee, which actually means you can find yourself on an order for uh, perhaps 50 euros, receiving a bill for maybe 20, 25 euros for, uh, for tax, tax and uh, administration fees. Uh, so that's it. And um, if you find yourself in a position where you're um, going to order some printed circuit boards from PCB Way. I hope you'll find uh, that you can play this uh, uh, video back slowly and, uh, and and follow along because there really is no reason to need to interact uh, uh, any differently with the user interface. And this page that I'm showing now is by far the most complicated. The other pages are simply um, acknowledgement of receipt of order and links for pay. They're fairly standard uh, payment uh, uh, processing type webs, uh, web user interfaces. This is the complicated one. And as you can see, a lot of the complexity is actually stuff that we don't need to care about. We just needed to know that we didn't need to care about it first. I hope you found this informative and interesting. Thank you for watching.